What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be talking about the Buy Vic Arcade Cabinet Series. Kind of like a history, how this whole design came about, why it's called the Buy Vic, and also future plans for more cabinets. Alright guys, I know this is probably like the third video you've seen on YouTube about this cabinet, but I feel like it has to be made only because in the future if I ever want to come back after years and years later, I feel like it's just a video I want to make talking about where the design idea came from. The biggest question is, Vic, what is up with the name? Why did you call it the Buy Vic? And I want to talk about future plans for this thing and why I'm doing this really. Alright guys, I can't get enough of all like the comments and the Instagram DMs and now I'm on TikTok and I'm posting videos. There's a lot of like viewers and social media is going nuts. I can't get enough of all the positive feedback I'm getting on this design. I, I really can't get enough of it. It's just kind of crazy. I'm doing this for eight years and it's like this one specifically is like I sat down and I drew it out. And just seeing it go from like a hand drawing to like on its feet, I'm standing next to it. I, I, it's just a whole different feeling and I can't get enough of it. I, I love it. I, I can't get enough of it. It's just one of those feelings that like, oh, like I made this. Like, yeah, I made this. So it's just been awesome seeing everybody like, damn, Vic, wait, whose cabinet is that? Somebody wrote that on, on my YouTube channel. I was like, whose cabinet is that? What is that? What is the name of the cabinet? I'm just getting so much feedback of like how beautiful it is and it's gorgeous and uh, everybody's like I want one. I, I, it's like the best feeling in the world. I can't get enough of it. I again, I, I'm gonna keep saying it, but it, to me, it's just a gorgeous cabinet. It is beautiful. I, I love it. I love everything about it. I think I'm gonna take this video. It's gonna be a little sporadic. I can already feel it. Um, I basically want to make this video kind of telling you about you know where the design idea came from. Really want to talk about like the name. A lot of people are like, Vic, what, what is up with this name? Like, buy Vic, what the? I'm getting that a lot, so I, I'm, my homework and my objective for this video is for you to understand where the buy Vic name came from. Uh, and just want to talk to you about like future plans for this. The main reason I made this cabinet, and honestly the biggest kind of request I get on my emails, and I'm talking daily, I'm getting a lot of people that want arcade cabinets with bigger screens. If I tell you how many emails I get daily, weekly, just for bigger screens, it's it's insane. In the past, I would suggest, hey, anything over 32 inches, you probably need a pedestal. But with this design, that just changed the game entirely. I also made this cabinet to kind of modernize the arcade cabinet that we know. Yes, we all know our classic original, you know, you think about a Dynamo cabinet, you think about the Konami cabinets that I've done, the Neo Geo cabinets that I've done. I still love the classics. I will still build the classics. Believe me, if you ask me for a replica build, I could do it. I'm just trying to get into that market of, hey Vic, I don't want a 32 inch screen, I want bigger screens. And also I get on the female side, hey, you know, my wife, we got to work with like the artwork design because it has to fit in our living room space and the wife has, I, I get that. That's honestly the main reason why I designed this. Again, you'd be surprised at how many people want bigger screens. Yes, now I could do anything you want. I can't stress enough. I will build these. I could build these custom made to order. Yes, I've been doing this for eight years. Yes, for a good six and a half, seven years, I would say. I've been using Gaming Solutions cabinets, but now I'm able to cut my own cabinet, so I'm very proud to say that I could cut anything and I could do anything now, and I'm not kind of tethered by GRS anymore. So again, these are totally custom made by me. I do use laminated birch on all my builds. I can't shut it up. Casters, these things are built much better than the MDF that I've used before. But I'm not really here to compare about, I don't want to go off track on this. So again, I get a lot of people that want bigger screens and that's perfectly fine in this case. What's so cool with this design, it's an external TV. You want to put a 65 inch on this, cool. You want to put a 32 inch, a 43, a 49, a 50, you could do that. You literally just change the TV. 
you're not kind of limited to inside walls. That is kind of the biggest thing and probably the hardest thing when it comes to like the Konami cabinet I built, the Neo Geo cabinets that I built. I put 32 inch screens on them. I did 143 inch and granted when you do make the side walls and put the TV in, I do give about an inch of space. This way it looks good. Now though TVs, newer TVs, some of them are coming out to be wider than normal dimensions. Some of them are coming out to be taller than normal dimensions. So it's kind of difficult, especially when you keep a regular classic arcade cabinet and you got to stay within the boundaries and all that. It, that's like the biggest thing I've always learned when building cabinets like this. And now you're really not tethered to walls. That's kind of the ultimate purpose of this. So keep in mind, this design to me is modern. Again, I do love the classics still. I'll build the classics, nothing, I'm not downgrading the classics, it's just this to me is modern. I'm gonna tell you the story about how the name came about and honestly, modern arcade games now, it's big screens. It's no longer these 17 inch CRTs, it is big screens. So again, this is my take on modern arcades. This is what I believe and what I'm hoping for is going to be the standard when it comes to modern arcades. So this right here, you are looking at the official rev. I call it the rev, the revision. This is the official version, the official rev, four player by Vic arcade cabinet with the 55 inch screen. This is the official one that I could duplicate. You're going to see when I go into the story about how this cabinet design came and the name, you're gonna see Rev A, which I personally have downstairs in my basement. That was the first ever Rev, and I will never make that Rev ever again. This right here, where you look at, is gonna be the standard for my four player here. Now, as far as talking about future and all that, I could take this design, the main thing is to take the skeletal design, this center piece here, and branch out into different arcade series and cabinets, I should say. So, what do I have up next? Right behind me, I'm getting ready to cut up the Guitar Hero cabinet that I've been talking about. And it's kind of cool, I'll go into the story with that. I, was, I had an original design for Guitar Hero, and with the nudge of my wife and the words that she said, because she's honestly right, uh, I'm redesigning the Guitar Hero cabinet and going with a By Vic series. I'm talking about Guitar Hero, let me talk about it right now. So again, Rev B is here, if you see way back, even on my stories, I had three cabinets in this garage at one point. I had the Nintendo Konami uh, Mario Sticker Bomb cabinet, I had my personal Rev A for a player, and I had this comic book one, Rev B. So last week I got the artwork in for all this, I did all the artwork for all the cabinets, my brother happened to be in the neighborhood, and he's like, hey Vic, I'm gonna come see the baby. I said, awesome, you could help me bring my cabinet downstairs to my game room, battle station, all that. So I wasn't actually planning on bringing it downstairs that soon, but literally I laid down the vinyl, brother was over, we bought it down. I put everything downstairs. I put the TV on it, I put the control panel on it. I called my wife downstairs and she was just mind blown. Even my brother was like, holy shit, like what is this? And basically we were downstairs, we actually, I have my guitar here, guitars, we were playing with my personal 40 terabyte system. And then I went in to tell my wife and my brother about the idea for Guitar Hero. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a Guitar Hero cabinet. They're like, oh shit, that's gonna be so cool. Especially with a big screen like this, it's gonna look awesome. And I was like, ooh, the Guitar Hero cabinet, I was actually gonna replicate a real Guitar Hero arcade cabinet. There is a real Guitar Hero arcade. You could do a Google search, I don't know if you ever played it. It's a 32 inch screen. It looks like an actual guitar amp. That's how it's designed. And I told him my idea. I was like, oh, I was gonna actually, I was gonna go a little bit smaller. I was gonna keep it 32 inch. And my wife's like, no, like you need to like take this and like run with it. You need to brand the hell out of it. You need to make the Guitar Hero cabinet. All your other future cabinets should be based on this design. And we were literally there for like in the basement for like 10 minutes and I was like, Shit, I already did like the CNC file. I was getting ready to cut a Guitar Hero cabinet. And she was like, no, Vic, you need to, you need to go with this design. You, she, she, literally, she literally looked at me and she goes, you're Vic VP. You're not like anyone else. I was like, you're right. And sure enough, I had to do a redesign. And 
It's actually kind of funny how all this unfolded because as I was actually doing the CNC file for Guitar Hero, there is an overseas company, I'm not going to name the name, but he made a Guitar Hero cabinet and it's not my idea, but he did what I was going to do. He actually replicated an original Guitar Hero arcade cabinet. His cabinet is designed based on a Guitar Hero arcade. So I was like, you know what? I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Biopic design. That's, that's how, I don't wanna look like I'm copying the overseas dude. And back to the drawing board we go. So get ready for that. My Guitar Hero cabinet though is gonna be, it's gonna be different. There's a couple of Instagram people and Facebook people that I spoke to, they know my little secrets because it's not gonna be just Guitar Hero. Again, if you've seen it on Instagram, you would not know one of the scratching attachments but that's not it i got two more secret attachments that nobody knows about just stay tuned for that so again my wife was like you got to take this design and i said no baby right i'm going to take this design and go with it so the future plans i do have a guitar hero cabinet which i'm not going to call guitar hero it might be like an ultimate party machine i don't know yet i don't know the name of it yet but let's just say it's not only guitar hero um i am planning a shooter cabinet style uh, a two-player deck and a four-player deck and 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 I should say and the last thing is a vertical cabinet I am looking into making a vertical cabinet in all brutal honesty after guitar here I was gonna make a Pac-Man Galica replica cabinet and put a 32 inch screen on it and you know what I might still do that but I'm gonna make the buy Vic series so that is the future plans with this is I'm gonna take this and, and run with it. And I, from the feedback on just the four player side, I'll definitely get more feedback when I make the Guitar Hero cabinet, but that's it. I'm making a staple on this. This is gonna be the Buy Vic arcade cabinet. I want it where people are gonna see this design and be like, oh shit, that is a Buy Vic cabinet right there. So uh, I'm excited, I'm, I'm excited. All right, so now I wanna answer everybody's number one question. I wanna go in on how and why this is called the Buy Vic Arcade Cabinet Series and all that. I've been doing this for eight years. I'm a very big fan, I'm a big person on giving respect and recognition where it's due. Like I said, if you've seen my personal Nintendo Switch cabinet, you saw the sticker bomb one, I always try to put in and give respect to the original companies or creators, that's why I always stress Konami Replica, Neo Geo Replica. Even when I was making Game Room Solutions cabinets, I would say this is a Game Room Solutions cabinet. That's just how I am. I'm a big believer on, I gotta give respect and, and incorporate the name somehow on anything I'm doing. So, you know, in this world, in this hobby, there are people that aren't doing that and, you know, you can't be upset that people that aren't doing it, but me personally, I feel great knowing that I am giving the recognition and respect where it's due. So, let me tell you the story about this cabinet and why it is called the Bivik series. It's gonna be a long one, so get ready for this. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. All right, so now I get this question asked a lot. Everybody's like, Vic, where in New York are you? Like, where are you? So, I'm considered in Long Island, New York. I'm basically borderline Queens and Long Island. Not to give you the exact location, but that's, that's where I am. If you know where the borderline of Queens and Long Island is, you'll know where I am. And by us here on Long Island, there is an Ikea in Hicksville. Again, this is like, it's kind of funny how this whole thing came about. So just get ready. I promise you, I'm gonna tell you where this design and by Vic name came from by the end of the story. So. One day I'm going to Ikea to go pick up something for my battle station, which is like one of those like uh, countertop things, the ground things from Ikea. As I'm driving to Ikea, I haven't been to this Ikea, but I'm driving to this Ikea, and as I'm driving, you get, you know, you see your billboards and all that, and it happened to be an Ikea billboard, and then next to it was a big red circle that said round one bowling. Like it just said round one with a bowling pin in the middle of it. I was like, oh cool, they have like a bowling alley here, awesome. I'm in Ikea, I do my shopping, whatever. The thing I bought is one of those things that you have to go to like the loading dock. So you have to like exit and wait for this guy to bring the piece. I'm waiting for this piece from Ikea and I look out and I'm like, oh shit, 
there's round one, the entrance to round one. I was like, you know what? Let me go check out this thing because I'm not going to waste my time waiting for Ikea. So I walk out of Ikea and then I'm greeted with like this big glass entrance. You could see everything inside of it, LEDs everywhere, rainbows, music blasting. I was like, oh, wait, this isn't a bowling alley. This is like an actual arcade. I was, I was like, I was mind blown. It's inside of a mall. The footprint of it, it's like massive. I couldn't believe it just from like looking at the entrance. You don't really have, you don't really realize how big this arcade was. So right at the entrance, I'm greeted with a couple of modern arcade titles. You're talking about like the new TMNT. Um, they did have an Injustice cabinet. Uh, they did have like the four uh, Hot Wheels. It was like a four steering wheel game. It was huge. It was a big, it was a big cabinet. And they had like this one random soccer game. It was definitely like an import because the instruction screen wasn't in English. And it had like four soccer balls and you actually like kick the ball. It was an arcade game. It was. I was mind blown just by looking at those four cabinets. It was right at the entrance. I was like, what am I going to expect from this? I thought it was going to be a bowling alley. The big thing again with that soccer game, it was definitely an import. I was like, okay, this is kind of a random game. Anyway, you walk past the front desk, you enter, you don't have to pay. Like I went there. I didn't, I didn't pay for anything. That's, <laughs> I went into an arcade. I didn't pay anything. I didn't play anything. I didn't pay anything when I went there. You go in, you enter, you greet it with like an air hockey table. And then all of a sudden I'm greeted with a bunch of claw machines. And I was like, claw machines? That's kind of cool. But as I look carefully and closer at these claw machines, they weren't like your standard claw machine, like with the three prongs. They were actually imported claw machines. Like I would think it was Japanese imported. It was like basically a UFO head and it only had like one arm or like two arms. And I was like, what? They basically took like the crane game and changed the whole dynamic of it. Basically, like you don't actually pick up the toy. They had it where it's like a bunch of ping pong balls and you scoop up ping pong balls and it drops it into like a grate. And if the ping pong ball drops on like a color, a single grate, like an egg crate, a single color, you win the prize. It's like, whoa, these guys took a whole different dynamic to the crane game. But again, the big thing that caught my eye was that it was not your standard three claws, it was imported. I was like, all right, cool. There was literally like 50 cranes. No joy, it was like 50 of them. I walk past the crane game because I'm not a crane game guy and I'm greeted with now driving games. Mario Kart, I've seen it was like a six cabinet Mario Kart one. I was like, wow, this is huge. But then I also saw Initial D and they had like Initial D three, four, five. And I was like, looking at Initial D, same thing, instructions on the screen are not in English. I was like, oh man, these guys got some imports. Like this isn't like your regular arcade. This, these guys are, 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 to me, it's like big. It was a big deal. I was like, I've never seen these cabinets before in my life. Right when you walk past the driving games, you're greeted now with loud music. And sure enough, it's like the whole music dance dance revolution area. It was massive. Like dance dance revolution, it didn't even have like the four arrows. It had like an LED screen on the floor and it looked like you were on a treadmill. And then they even had like a DJ mixing one and a beat mania. I was I'm telling you, I was like, what is going on? And again, all those cabinets I'm talking about, they were all imported. Again, I was already mind blown by it. You hang a left, you're greeting out with Ticket Redemption games. I don't like them, but the, they did have like the Space Invaders game where you're kind of shooting something. That was kind of cool and whatever. Then you see the shooting games. They did have like Halo. Uh, they had the House of the Dead 4. They had Terminator. They even had Time Crisis 5. I was like, I like, I, again, I'm like mind blown by just the amount of games in it, the footprint, I was, I was mind blown. I was in heaven, if you think of it like that. So I see all the shooting games, awesome. And that's basically, honestly, it. They even had like the big Tomb Raider and like Rabid. It's like a, the Tomb Raider one was massive, like a projection screen. It was insane. So that's mostly what it is. And then down below was a bowling alley. But where this whole shooting game stuff is, there was a little like, area tucked away it caught my eye because in this little area that i saw at a quick glance i saw a view links cabinet and i was like okay you know what these guys have imported cabinets that must be a real view links not like some duplicate it was a i was like it had to be a real view link so i'm walking in up to this room and again it, it was it was tucked away because also i'm like oh a regular arcade game like nothing like insane a regular arcade game let me go take a look so they had like five Viewlinks cabinets and they were all the sit down style. They were very low and I'd never seen a Viewlinks in person. I was like, oh, this is kind of a nice cabinet. Maybe I want to design it and all. I would want to copy it and all that. 
And on one of the viewings cabinets, they had Metal Slug 1. I was like, whoa, classics, like cool. I'm, I'm into classics all day. And what's kind of cool was that it was a viewings cabinet. Uh, it was one controller on the deck. So it was a pretty big deck, but one controller in the middle. And it was pretty cool because it had six button layout, but they actually capped two buttons because Metal Slug and Neo Geo is four buttons. They actually have like physical caps. So you could tell that you could actually pop the cap out and put a button in. I was like, oh, this is a genius idea. It was gorgeous. I was just admiring a view links. As I'm leaving, I take a left and I'm, I'm just, I'm just smacked in the face with an arcade cabinet that was a Street Fighter V arcade. And there was three of them, big. I was like, I, I get, I'm telling you, it, it caught me. I actually like froze and I was like, hang on. Is that a Street Fighter V arcade cabinet? I, I never heard of that. This is before Emuline and you know, before Emulation had it. And I was like, number two, I was like, is that a TV screen mounted to an arcade cabinet? I'm like walking up to it now, because again, it, it caught me so off guard. I was literally, I literally stared at these three machines for no joke, like 10 minutes, just in like shock and awe. I was like, I was like, I have to build this cabinet. <laughs> that's, how, that's how big of an impact. I was like, you know what? I gotta build this cabinet. It was a gorgeous cabinet. It's a modern cabinet. External screen. The side art on it was very plain. It was very basic. And as I got closer to it, and again, I took a bunch of pictures of this thing. I'm telling you, I have like 30 pictures of this cabinet. As I got closer to it, it is an orange side art. And all it has on, in big letters is B Y K I N G. By King. Grab my phone. I was like, what is this? I was like, what is a Bi King arcade cabinet? Nothing came up. I then looked up Bi King Street Fighter V, and then I see it. All of a sudden, you get a bunch of videos on YouTube. Not a bunch, it's like three or four of them. But basically, it's an imported cabinet. Bi King Street Fighter V type arcade. And I was like, I'm there, there's three cabinets. There's one dude playing one. The control panel was high up, he was actually on a stool, business suit, like I'm telling you, business suit with a briefcase, guy was just kicking ass with guile. And I was like, this cabinet is gorgeous, I'm, I have to duplicate it. It hit me so hard that I ran to my truck, <laughs> I literally went outside, I went in my truck, I grabbed my tape measure, I went back in, I took a bunch of pictures, and I started measuring with the tape measure, every square inch of that cabinet. That's how much of an impact it is. I said to myself, I was like, you know what? I have to replicate this cabinet. I have to duplicate this cabinet because I've never seen a cabinet like this. It was modern, it was Street Fighter V, it was, that's how much of an impact it is. And again, I was there for about 15 minutes just measuring, I'm talking, how wide is this and how tall from the floor to the top is this? I even measured the size of the screen. How, you know, from the floor to like the bottom of the control pad, how big is it? I measured everything. And again, the Bi King cabinet was not that deep, but it only had one joystick. I was like, this big machine for one joystick, eight buttons. I was like, this is a perfect design for a four player cabinet. And there you have this. I'm pretty sure while I'm talking, I'm gonna put this picture, I should have thought of it, I'll put a, you know, there's gonna be a picture of the actual cabinet and all that. Again, if you haven't known, if you haven't searched it yet, if you do look up by King, it's one word, by King Street Fighter V, you are gonna see what looks to be like this cabinet. Again, honestly, if you look up by King right now, I think he has a second rendition, which is like a Gia attack game. That was what was pretty cool with that cabinet is that the side art just had Bi King on it. Didn't have Street Fighter V artwork on it. It had a marquee in the middle that had Street Fighter V, but what's kind of cool with that company and their idea, I don't know if it's a company or the game crit, whoever made that cabinet, they basically treated it like a Neo Geo cabinet where, or a Dynamo cabinet where it's a base cabinet and you could basically swap out the board. So there's no artwork pertaining to the game itself. It's basically a hot swap, you know, you could swap the boards out. I was like, that is, that is modern, that is the way it is. So if you haven't caught on yet, that is why this is called the Bi Vic. Again, original credit goes to Bi King, 
That's why it's called the Bay Vic. Again, I have to give respect and, you know, I just have to give credit where credit is due. On that note, though, because now sometimes you're like, oh, you, you, you duplicated Bay Cake. Now we're going to talk about Rev B versus Rev A. So, again, I built this cabinet based on a four player design. The Bi King cabinet is a one joystick setup, and the control panel is not even any size magnitude of a four player deck. So, what I'm going to get at with this is I'm going to show you very closely this specific cabinet here, which is Rev B. This is the official one going out. But I'm also going to show you my personal cabinet, which is Rev A. And the reason why I will never make that cabinet again, besides the difficulty of cutting the wood on it, my Rev A is a one-to-one, -one, minus the four-player deck, it is a one-to-one -one scale replica of the Bi King arcade cabinet. You're going to definitely see, I'm going to take you down to the floor a little bit, you're going to see the big difference between this Rev and the Bi King replica cabinet. Now it's pretty cool, again, I, I, it, it, it's a coincidence, but it's kind of like a personal thing. Anytime I make a brand new either design or cabinet, like the Konami cabinet, like the Neo Geo cabinet, like the Bi Vic cabinet, my little secret is I always keep the first version, rendition, that's mine. That is my personal collection one. So it's kind of cool because when I was cutting Rev A, and when I put the control panel, I'm gonna go in depth on this, I basically had to come to the conclusion I had to actually modify the design of the cabinet. So, yes, it is a Bi King design idea, but overall, it is not really a Bi King cabinet. That is why it is Bi Vic. That is why I won't be making a Rev A, because that technically is an exact duplicate to Bi King. Whereas Rev B is not. So now what's kind of crazy with how all this like came about, while I was cutting Rev A, I had a customer that wanted a four player cabinet. I told him, listen, I'm actually making a brand new design. You know, if you give me some time, I'll let you be the first person to get your hands on an original cabinet. Rev A really, when I was first like, I'm talking like I just cut the side panels out. And I, I posted on YouTube the side panel cut, it's a short. I'm not gonna lie. I cut it, I put it on the wall, and I was looking at it, and I was like, oof, I don't know if this idea is gonna work out. I didn't think that the design was gonna work. I didn't think that, I, I didn't think it was stable. I kinda thought that the TV was gonna make it tilt back. I, I had a lot of things, and I cut it. I cut everything out. It did take about three four by eight sheets of laminated birch to get even this cabinet. It, it takes three sheets. And I'm the type where I don't want to waste and throw away something I cut, because obviously that's money, I don't want to waste it. So when it came to Rev A and when I take you down, you'll understand, you're gonna see it. I just want to take you down to show you Rev B. And the big difference that you're gonna see from this, the one that will be duplicated versus the one that I originally had, is you're gonna see the depth on this here, mainly here for the control panel. When I cut Rev A, I put it up on its feet. I didn't have the control panel set. I was looking at it, I was like, okay, this looks good, but I need to put the control panel on it. And again, you're gonna see it on Rev A, but basically when I put the control panel on Rev A, I didn't make this part deep enough to support the weight of the control panel. So literally you gotta think about it, me, it's, you know, I worked late at night. It was like midnight and I was like, oh crap. I might have to junk this whole cabinet because I can't even put a stable four player deck. I'm talking like the control panel was there, but I had to hold it with my waist so it wouldn't drop down. I basically didn't make it deep enough. So based on what you see right now, again, the official release, you could see how big this is, not to mention all this. You're, I want you to mainly focus here, because when you see Rev A, this is in here, and the front panel changes completely from here versus Rev A. Basically, again, why I won't ever duplicate Rev A and why I kept it, I didn't like to, you know, waste wood. 
I basically made Rev A work and I feel better that it's my personal one. I have to worry about it, you know, falling apart. And Rev B is what you see here now. And basically what I'm trying to get at is you live and you learn. You know, I cut, I cut Rev A. I, once I put that panel on, I even bought an attachment. I'm going to show you everything. I just didn't like the idea of having this attachment. I was like, I'm not going to be able to sell a cabinet with this attachment. It doesn't look right. So this is the official version. It is deep enough. The control panel, you don't have to worry about it moving or dipping down. That right there is official. But let's take a look at Rev A. I'm going to basically kind of end this video downstairs with Rev A and all that. But your main thing is to focus right here in the front and this kind of edging on the side. I was gonna like take the camera and like walk down the stairs and kind of turn the corner like imitating what I saw at round one. Yeah, this is what I saw, minus the LEDs. This is what I saw. This is the one-to-one -one Rev A, it's technically the replica of the Bi King Street Fighter V arcade cabinet. It's exactly this. This is Street Fighter V type arcade in a track mode right now. Granted again, four player deck on this versus by King's one center joystick. This is the inspiration to the Bivik arcade cabinet series. And it, it's awesome. I mean, if I turn the lights off again, you can see it in like a YouTube short video I made. You could just see like, compared to like the other cabinets I have here, this one is eye catching. And it's just, it's just awesome. Another thing, like just another, thing to see on its feet and in person. Again, this cabinet here is one to one. Those measurements, those pictures I took, that is this. And again, from learning from the first rev, just like my pinball, just like my Neo Geo, you live and you learn. I wasn't gonna jump this, I had to make this work. And again, it's my personal one of one. All these cabinets here, they're number one, like number one. You won't find that in the wild. You will never find the number one Vic VP game case arcades written down. So it's cool. It's awesome. Again, this is it. Big thing is you could see from where you are, you could see the kick plate. The big eye catching thing definitely is the footrest. I wanted to do that. And again, from experience, this footrest is cool. It's not really used though. And the biggest headache though was cutting the 45 degree for this. Again, I will never, I don't, I don't wanna say the word never, but I will never plan to duplicate this cabinet. Uh, I'm gonna take you down, I'm gonna show you the attachment I had to put so that this, cab, this control panel is sturdy and stable. So now again, like I said before, you wanna keep your eye here on when I did the Rev B. So again, this is the exact duplicate. You could see that basically, the footrest here is the depth of Rev B. Rev B goes straight up right here. That's where it goes. So with this whole design here, I did lose space for the artwork. Big thing was that this little L bracket here, it supports the control panel, but you could basically see compared to Rev B, this right here is about, I would say a good four to five inches, whereas Rev B comes out to about six to seven inches and it gives that support. I'll bring you in closer for that attachment I was talking about. If you see here, I do have two L brackets that I had to put here to keep this sturdy and stable. I'm gonna straighten out my USB, that's OCD right there, but I'll straighten that out later. But basically, yes, I had to keep these L brackets to give that support. And I said to myself, like, I can't really, I can't produce, mass produce this and have this L bracket here. So again, that was the one downside or learning experience when it came to making Rev B. It's awesome. A lot of people like me personally, I love this whole like uh, diamond plate. It's actually vinyl on this and I'll be brutally honest, I bought it on Amazon. I will never do it again. It is the worst vinyl. It is not sticky at all. It's actually staples holding it down underneath, not visible, but it does look cool. Like I will give you that. This also, the real by King cabinet did have a diamond plate kick plate here. So again, you can also see the kick plate itself is in more here, it's more recessed. Whereas the one upstairs, Rev B, you get more artwork out of it. It looks bigger, 
It's just overall nice. The Rev B is the official version, and this is Rev A. So again, this is now my four player by Vic arcade cabinet. Same thing, 55 inch screen. Again, slight modifications when it came to the final rev on it. It's on casters, so it does move. When I brought it down, I was trying to figure out where I want to put it, but this kind of little corner is perfect. And you can see with like the design of the house, it just fits. Granted, it is a TV mount, so you could always lower the TV, but I did the artwork so great on this. I mean, you can even see the world is yours right under the screen. Oh man, I, I can't, I really can't get enough of it. Again, just wheeling it back. I got the power cord under the wheel. Let's move that out of the way. And you basically push it in and put it in its final home right there. It's great right next to my Neo Geo. It's awesome. This is it. This is awesome. Stay tuned. I do have a lot of videos. I mean, Again, 40 terabyte PC on this. Like I said before, I do have the Guitar Hero guitars that were connected to it right here with the USB that I, you saw me fixing. The DJ controller here. I do have a lot of videos lined up for this specific build. Again, this is my personal 40 terabyte hyperspin build. It's got the trackball on it. It's gonna have light guns on it. There's a lot. There's gonna be a lot of videos on this build and I'm, I'm just so happy that it's, it's here, it's home. It looks great, right? <laughs> All right, well, there you guys have it. That is the plan for the future. That is where the Vic name came from. And uh, just game on. I, I, if you look at, if you see on Instagram, I've been posting a lot on this now because four player blitz on this is awesome. Uh, playing centipede, trackball stuff. It's, I'm just enjoying the hell out of it. Awesome, awesome stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned. There's gonna be a lot of four player action coming up.